God is so gracious. Goodbye, children. What time does the game start? I'm sorry? One o'clock. Who's DVR in the game? Raise your hand. Okay, it's DVR at their house. Okay, party at their house afterwards. Okay. That way nobody feels like, oh my gosh, we've got to get out of here. And, you know, you have your little phones and you can always check ESPN. It'll keep you up on the. Not that I've ever done that in church service. It looks bad when you're preaching and checking the Packer game score. It's true. I am a Packer fan. Oh, you boo now. <laughs> now, I was told yesterday to be kind to the Steeler fans. And so I thought, well, it is scriptural because it says when we are weak, God will be strong in us. So I thought if we had to pray for the Steelers, oh, forget it. Okay. Well, the Packers are playing the Vikings on Monday night, so I'm good. I can stay here all day. All right. That should be a blowout game anyway, so. The what? What doesn't start till three? What race? Oh, nap car. Yeah. Nap car, yeah. I've got a son who watches nap car. <laughs> all right. Okay, the, the message goes right along with what has been going on all morning, so it must be the same Holy Spirit. So we're going to, I'd like you to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. That's a, a well-known scripture for those who have walked around the block a few times with our faith, and, uh, but I think we're going to look at it maybe just a little differently than you've looked at it before. Okay, everybody likes to quote Hebrews 11, chapter 1. I'm going to read 1 and 2. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. The ancients, or the elders, okay, were commended for. So, being sure of what we hope for, well, what do we hope for? What are we hoping for? We're hoping for heaven. Okay? That's what this chapter is kind of about. <laughs> We're hoping for heaven. We are, we are, a, that is our blessed hope. We are hoping and, and waiting for answered prayer. Sometimes we're in the middle of waiting, and we're not seeing the answers yet, but we're waiting, and we are hoping for prayer that it has not been answered that we don't see yet. That hasn't been demonstrated. That isn't um, right in front of us. Okay? So the faith, which is a gift from God, that faith that God gives to us is so that we can have hope and be certain of what we don't see. Okay? We don't see heaven. Physically, we don't see it. And yet... We know it's real, and that's fair where faith comes in. Faith is when we don't see it and believe it. I mean, if we had an opportunity to just bop to heaven and back to earth and bop to heaven and back to earth anytime we wanted to, it wouldn't take faith to believe in heaven, would it? Because it would be something that we see. Okay. So we hope for it. We are waiting for it. God's promises, God's answered prayer for heaven. Faith is being sure and certain in the, face, in the face of difficulty and struggle. That's what faith is. Being certain of God's love in the middle of our own struggles, in the middle of our difficulties. Okay, let's jump down. We're going to, uh, by the way, we're going to just take a little hike through uh, Hebrews chapter 11. We're just going to stay in this chapter the whole time. Don't worry, your hands won't get tired flipping. That leaves your other hand free to check ESPN. All right. <laughs> you laugh, but you know there's going to be somebody doing that. I know there's Colts fans that do it at my church. I don't know why. It's not like they're going to score or anything. <laughs> Don't stone the prophet. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I was going to lay off a little bit, but the jokes kept coming this morning. <laughs> it was the anointing. <laughs> 
Do you, have you seen the one that's been circulating on the web or on the, kind of going around on Facebook? And it's, um, uh, well, those of us in Indiana, there's big storms coming, right? And the tornadoes are coming. So everybody needs to, this is the warning right now, so everybody needs to go to Lucas Oil Stadium because there'll be no touchdowns there. All right, I laughed at that one too, and I first heard it. <laughs> it's easy to be a Packer fan now, but I was a Packer fan when we were losing. I just want you to know that too. <laughs> okay, it, it, you know, it always shifts and, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, Hebrews. Um, the name of this message, by the way, is called, It Takes Faith to Be an Alien. Okay? takes faith to be an alien is the name of this message. All right, Hebrews 11 and verse 7. Let's go down to there. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. You know, this Hebrews 11 is a list of all the greats, all the great people of faith and all their great stories. And we're like, oh, yeah. And we show our kids these little Noah Ark books, and we have little Noah Ark, you know, nursery fixtures. And they're just so cute because they have all the animals. My kids had a little Noah Ark, Noah's Ark to play with, and they put the little animals in there, and it's so great. But you know what? It was horrible to be Noah. It was terrible to be Noah. First of all, if he was, God told him to build an ark and there was like hardly any rain where he lived and he didn't live near the water per se and so he had to big, build a large boat and everybody made fun of him. Okay, because what he was doing looked insane. He looked stupid. Okay, he heard God and he was standing on God and, and doing what God told him to do and everybody mocked him. I'm sure that all of us would mock him. I mean, unless, of course, we all heard God like he did, and he probably would all be righteous, maybe just me. All right. <laughs> if you want to be asked back, you've got to be nice, right? <laughs> okay, so he was made fun of him, and nobody listened to him. He tried to preach and preach and preach and tell people about what was going to happen, and nobody listened. Nobody listened, so he spent all his time, all his money, building this ark after years and years. And then... The rain started coming. You know, the rains came down and the flood came up. The rains came down and the we sing about it all the time. You know how horrible that must have been? Are the children all gone? Yes. That must have been incredibly horrible when that happened because here he made it in the ark with his family. Yay, yay. But everybody else didn't. Okay, so there was complete destruction. Everyone they knew in the community, the people he bought his grapes from, the people he bought his you know, furniture from, those people that you do commerce business with and people that you knew, the neighbors, everybody got wiped out. Okay, it was horrible for him to have to live through this. Everyone drowned. All his extended family died. If he had more than what was there, there was... They would have died. Um, all living things that were not in the ark died. All living things. And when Noah got off the ark, what did he do? He planted a vineyard and he got drunk. I'm thinking the man had post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> and he was self-medicating. That's my guess. But I am a counselor, and so I'm guessing the poor guy had PTSD. Why wouldn't he have had PTSD? Shoot. So he plants a vineyard. I know what I need. I need to get plant a vineyard. That's what I need to do. So that's what he did right away. It says it in the Bible. It says he got drunk right in the Bible. I love the fact that the Bible is, like, honest. Okay. Otherwise, we would think, oh, Noah, such a great man of faith. He suffered. Okay. He suffered with the call that God gave him. This was trouble. This was difficult. This was painful. This was, he witnessed the destruction of the world. Okay. He knows that despite the horror, that this earth is not his home. He is an alien. Okay, he is an, Noah is an alien being. <laughs> okay. An alien and stranger. Scripture uses the term alien and strangers. Oh, we'll get to that. Hebrews 11, verse 8. Let's look at Abraham. Yay, Abraham. We love Abraham. Ooh. 
father of the nations. Verse 8, by faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents and did as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. All right, so in this section, Abraham was called to go to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance. All right, so here's Abraham, minding his own business. God speaks to him, okay? He does not know God. All right. He lived in the land that the people worshipped other gods. Moses had not gone to Mount Sinai yet and got the law. There was no law at that time. This was Abraham. He's the one who kind of started everything, you know, by his faith and his family. So God talks to him, and I bet as he goes to Sarah and says, Hey, Sarah, God talked to me. She went, Yay! You're such a wonderful person. Of course God talked to you, honey. And he goes, And God says we need to leave all of our family, and we need to just get in a tent and go. And she'd be like, You want me to leave my mom? Are you kidding? What about grandma? You want me to leave grandma? And where are we going? I don't know. And Sarah's going, yes! Oh, that's so exciting, Abraham. I am so excited. Thank you for taking me away from my family and, and taking us to a place that we don't even know where you're going, for goodness sakes. What are you thinking? You know that happened in that tent. <laughs> All right. Of course, they were holier than probably. But these were people. All these greats in, listed in Hebrews 11 were just people like us. They had to go through trials and difficulties, and the reason they made it in the faith chapter was because they knew they were aliens. Okay? They had the faith of aliens. They trusted God enough to go through the trials, go through the difficulties, go through the pain, and stand firm because, what did that say here? He was looking... In verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. He was looking forward to heaven. That's what he was looking forward to. He was heading to the promised land, but he didn't know that. Okay. So he left his family. They were moving. They left. Uh, but he knew that the earth was not his home. So he was a nomad. He traveled in tents, and that's how they lived with their flocks, and they, and they lived, and they, they went to other people's lands. Now, that would make them illegal aliens. <laughs> I couldn't resist that one either. <laughs> All right, verse um, 17. Oh, no, wait, sorry. I skipped a whole page. <laughs> You're like, glory to God. <laughs> okay, uh, verse 11. <laughs> By faith, Abraham, even when he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered God him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted, here it is, that they were aliens and strangers on earth. All right. <laughs> so Abraham had a promise from God. And his promise that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. It must have looked pretty bad when his wife couldn't conceive. 